Scientists are makers, and the tools they use for research and experimentation often don't come off the shelf. Join my friends Kishore Hari and Indre Viscontis as they visit the labs and workshops where scientists engineer custom tools and technologies to better understand our world. This is Science in Progress. Okay, the moment of truth. I am in the aquarium, and the octopus, I've been told, has been practicing with my puzzle for a couple of weeks, so now it's time to try and find out if she can find the treat in this puzzle while we're filming. Can you walk me through what the octopus, what, what happened? What just, how did that just go? It was very loud in there. So yes. if you can walk me through how that, how that all went. Uh, well, we brought her up to station. We called her by splashing uh, on the surface of the water. She came up. Uh, we rewarded that's a, her. That's a regular signal you have with her that lets her know interaction is going to happen. Yes, that's okay. the cue that we're going to start to feed. We're going to start a training session. Um, Come on over. Okay. We're gonna get some food. Okay. So, so yeah, she moved over. She mm -hmm. she sort of woke up and yes. stretched a bit. Yes, she did. Came over to the other side and seemed to be ready to mm -hmm. to eat and to and to play. Right. So we did give her the puzzle. Um, she manipulated a little bit. Decided today was not the day she wanted to work on it. Well, it was fascinating. So she grabbed the first. She grabbed the mm -hmm. whole thing, enveloped it entirely. Mm -hmm. um, is that a standard way that octopuses explore something? Uh, it is. It's actually something, uh, it's a behavior they use when they uh, envelop their prey uh, called a web over. Okay. And they'll just grab a crab or whatever it is that they're going to eat, just bring it into all their arms and manipulate it in that manner. So in a way the puzzle's operating just like a crab, but a crab is a puzzle that has to be solved. Pretty much, it's, yeah. It's got stuff inside, so mm -hmm. it has to be in investigated. Yes. So this is the same operation to yes. the octopus's brain. I yeah. guess. In a way, yeah. Except it, crabs don't have levers. <laughs> well, they do have a packaging problem of the shell that right. they have to be, you know, cracked and bit into it in order to get the meat. So. so then we let her rest a little bit and we tried it again and this time she seemed to grab it in a different way. Mm -hmm. Like more of her tentacles moving around and sort of investigating it? Yeah, she was investigating it. Uh, you know, she did have it in a slightly different orientation and once again she decided Day was not the day, so and, and but we operated it twice. That decision was really clear. Like she was like she touched it and then effectively let go of it mm -hmm. and went back into her corner where she started out and yes. like I'm done. Yes. So once she's done, she's really done. Is yes. that how yeah. that works? Yeah, that animal cannot do anything that it does not want to do. Or we cannot make it do anything. So it's all positive reinforcement. Yes, absolutely. Yes, good. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been acclimatizing her to the to the puzzle. How has she done in, in the training sessions? Uh, it's been hit and miss. Uh, at first I offer it to her with the food readily available so she knows that there's a pocket where she can pull food out of the puzzle. Okay. And then I'll gradually close it uh, more and more that will just increase the difficulty. Um, she has to be pretty hungry and very motivated to want to pull that open really? to get it out. Uh, she did solve it one time, okay. uh, and I think she was very hungry that day, uh, so I was giving it to her first thing right. uh, when she was the most hungry. Uh, she did it that day, and then uh, I kind of feel that uh, she might have felt the reward might have been a little small for her. Uh, <laughs> so it, it's, it's possible uh, she might associate it with the reward not being large enough. So. I may not want to waste my time working on this. Wow, she's actually doing a cost-benefit analysis. Potentially. Okay. <laughs> so the whole genesis of this was that I heard that octopuses need toys for stimulation. And whether or not she got the food out of it, do you feel like she was stimulated? Oh, absolutely. I mean, she was manipulating it. She was interacting with it. And it just reinforces that natural behavior of explor exploration. Oh, so it feels like communication. Really sort cool. Of. Sort of, a little bit. This, uh, we're interacting. That's yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Really lovely. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, so did she figure it out? She did not figure it out on while our cameras were filming, but it was really cool. 
Um, first, she was sort of sleeping over in her corner, and we agitated the water, and she came over. Clearly, it's time to play. Uh, uh, handed her the puzzle, and she enveloped the whole thing and grabbed onto it, and then spent some time letting it go. And Margarita said that in practice, like in training, she did open it up at one point, but maybe was a little disappointed in how small the reward was for the work that had to get done. So if I had to do this again, I might think about a little larger of a reward. I didn't realize that, you know, octopuses might be doing cost-benefit analysis. <laughs> yeah, maybe it may, or maybe like you put some caviar in there. Like. Right, right. So like a little a trail of, of, of clues to solve oh, yeah. that are each rewarded so that she can crack open the... Yeah. But what oh. the other thing I, I noticed is that you only have that one colored lever and everything else is is sort of translucent. Yeah. Do you think that that makes it easier or harder for her? I, I, I'm not exactly sure. There, there's also, clearly, she's not interacting with it on a visual basis. It's primarily on a tactile basis, and uh -huh. I, hadn't, I hadn't considered that. So right. if I, again, if I did this, I might consider making some bumpy and smooth surfaces so that she could feel, or an octop you know, whatever octopus we gave it to could feel a difference. Yo. Yeah, and then maybe like a little bit of bumpy means like there's a little bit of food, and yeah. then a lot of bumpy, there's like a big, you know, reward. Right, we could train them, we could train them how to, I don't know, you know, do something really radical by, by slowly acclimatizing them to a textural uh, language. Well, well, hopefully you've increased her lifespan by at least a couple weeks. I love the idea that she played with something that I built in my shop. It feels a little like, if not communication, at least in interaction between species. I'm obsessed with octopuses. Like, yeah. the way that they think, the way that their brains work, their cognition, genetically totally different than ours, is riveting. Yeah, I know, and the whole, this whole distributed nervous system idea, the idea that like different arms can have different personalities. And, and that they can, they can operate independently or in conjunction with each other. Yeah. Like they can they can go back and forth between this arm has its own mind yeah. and now it's opti being activated uh, with, from the central brain. Okay, so one quick last question. Yeah. If you had to build a robot based on what you now know about octopus intelligence, what would be like the feature that you think would be so cool to highlight? Oh, wow. Right, well, I mean, the thing about the octopus that makes it powerful is that its nervous system is distributed around so it can do lots of subroutines that don't have to take up the central processor. Um, so by all means, you know, we keep thinking of a brain as a centralized information gatherer, but if you decentralized it, you inherently increase the survivability because you could lose part of it and you still have the ability to survive and escape. Yeah, so you could create a robot where even if it like broke off a limb, it really wouldn't matter. Exactly. So it's been awesome to interact with the octopus, but you know, because they're so intelligent, would you feel like it's ethically responsible to keep it as a pet? No, for me, no. Um, they clearly need a huge amount of stimulation, and to, if I was, it would seem to me very selfish to try that, to, to do that in my own home recreationally. Scientifically, yes. But to me, the, 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 the interaction is a side benefit of providing some huge environment for them, like at an aquarium. So right. I, I personally wouldn't do that. And then you'd have to hire like a trainer that would yes. come in every day, like a nanny. That, would be, that nanny. would be what would be required. A nanny and a team of scientists that, to work with this octopus, not just like, it's not a pretty thing in your house.